that through the storms and through the struggles, I'm glad to know that the blood is still there. Amen. Thank God. It won't just wash away. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget next Saturday, we're going to have family day and uh, 10 o'clock kickball behind the community center on Wachula Road. We'll come back here. We're going to have lunch and uh, play some volleyball. And uh, I ordered that little movie, The Star, that little animated cartoon thing about the birth of Christ. It was pretty good. So got that if you want to watch it. Looking forward to it. Don't forget December 23rd. That Sunday is our uh, Christmas uh, play that morning and then uh, banquet after that, no service that night. Also, uh, we got uh, Brother Scott. It's his birthday, and he's trying to get out of it, trying to hide over there. Went on a, went on a four-wheeling expedition today trying to get out of it, but he's got all the kids pointing at him, so... And it's their anniversary Friday. So a happy birthday to him and a well-deserved happy anniversary to you. I mean, we were singing to Sister Cheryl this morning. I'm thinking if there's anybody deserves a happy anniversary, it's Sister Cheryl. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just teasing. These, these women's got to put up with us men. All right. Because you didn't show up this morning, now I get to lead happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday god bless you happy birthday to you And happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary, God bless you, happy anniversary to you. All right. All right. Birthdays and anniversaries, y'all must have had to wait till you was 18. <laughs> Amen. If you have your Bibles, John chapter number 21. John chapter number 21. Reading down a little further than we were last Sunday morning. I don't know why in the world my mouth is so dry. Yeah, John 21. John 21, reading verse number 18, reading down, you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had... Spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith unto Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And Jesus saith un, said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. When thou then went this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciple should not die, yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to thee? You see how things get misinterpreted? This is a disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things as we know that his testimony is true. And there, and there all, 
are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. I'd like to call your attention back to verse number 19. We're going to read through there just again, just with me. I want to see, I want you to see what's going on. Jesus is trying to get Peter's attention. He's talking to him. Again, I'm reminding you, Jesus is fixing to leave. It's an intense time. He's trying to get Peter's attention. He's trying to keep him focused on what he's trying to get Peter to understand. And verse number 19, he said, And this spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. This is Jesus. And when he had, thus, when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, talking about John, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? You see, Peter's got his eyes on somebody else. Peter's looking around, trying to figure out what everybody's going to do. And Peter saith unto him, said unto Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? And Jesus said unto him, If I will that he should tarry till I come. And this is where I want you to focus. What is it to thee? Follow me. What he's saying is, Peter, stay focused. Don't get distracted. Follow me. I'd like to preach to you if God would help me and the Holy Ghost would anoint me tonight. Just a message simply entitled, Stay Focused. Follow Him. Would you pray with me tonight? Precious Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you. God, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. Father, we thank you for all that you've done this day. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you, God, for every song. God, we thank you, God, for all that you've done in our hearts and in our lives, Lord. And now, God, I ask you, God, that you would anoint the preaching, God. I pray, God, that you'd push back every force of the enemy, God, that would try to hinder, to distract, God. Lord, or steal away this word of God out of our hearts, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that you would anoint me, God, with the Holy Ghost and fire, Lord. Help me to preach this message like you laid it upon my heart, dear Lord. God, I pray, God, not only, God, would it be preached, but, Lord, it would be heard, God. It would be accepted, God. It would be applied, dear Lord, God, that it would make us, dear God, closer unto you. Father, we ask you to touch us and help us in this house tonight. Holy Ghost, have your way in Jesus' name, the name that's above every name. Everybody loved him. Said, amen. 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 You may be seated tonight. I preached along these lines before, but studying last uh, for last Sunday morning, I began to preach there through Peter uh, 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 along that message, uh, Do You Love Me? And I began to uh, help you to understand what Jesus is doing. He is pressing Peter. He's conditioning Peter because he is fixing to leave. And he's fixing to leave that church in the hands of Peter. Peter's going to be a hinge, a very important pivoting part uh, uh, of the, for the disciples in that New Testament church and he's trying to get Peter to stay focused and, and you see here uh, just it's just like the old enemy to help us to get our eyes off of everything that the Lord intends to do and get us distracted here and distracted there and Jesus said listen it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing what is it to you amen follow me amen church I can tell you it's easy to lose our focus it's easy to get distracted it's easy to see what that one's doing what this one's doing I'm telling you uh, uh, I'm telling you the devil the devil will give you plenty of things to distract your mind look over here look over there look back here look at this how this is falling apart how this is doing good look at this ministry look at that ministry the devil's always trying to get our attention off of what God is trying to get us focused on listen we're talking about a very if I can get you to understand if I can get you to understand how important it is this conversation is that Jesus is having with Peter you can understand the reason he does not want him to get distracted he said listen just don't get distracted follow me amen and church I can tell you we're in a place just that important tonight Jesus is about to come and he can't afford for the church to get distracted amen and he's saying don't get distracted don't get upset Amen. Don't stay, don't get uh, your attention on everything else. I need you to stay focused and just follow me. Amen. 
Peter, Peter, he's getting distracted. He's getting worried. We do the same thing. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we get distracted. We get worried about everything and everybody else and what everybody else is doing. Jesus reminds him to stay focused. He's laid this message on my heart tonight to remind us, Mayaka City Church of God, just stay focused. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. It doesn't matter what's going on in another church down the road. God's talking to us, amen. Jesus is talking to us. He's talking to you, amen. It may be even somebody across the pew, across the pew from you. Can I tell you, he's talking to us, amen, he's saying that he's, when he's give you a calling, when he's give you a burden, there's nobody else that can take that and do that for you, it's Jesus laying that on your heart, amen, and you can't afford to get distracted, amen, you gotta stay focused, you gotta stay focused, amen, on what he's called you to do, amen, why, because he's put it in your heart for a reason, I want to ask you a question. Do you think the church is any less important now than it was then? Do you? Why, why, why do you say that? Why do you say that the church is just as important now as it was then? Huh? Do we really believe Jesus is about to come? Do we? If we really believe that Jesus is about to come, then who in the world are we expecting to preach this gospel? Who are we expecting to carry this gospel out to a lost and a dying world? It's us. It's us. We can't wait for nobody else to do it. John's not coming back. Peter's not coming back. Amen. It's us, church. We're in that very pivotal time. Amen. Jesus is about to come, and he's laid this church as we know it at our feet today, Brother Fernando. And he's saying, amen, just stay focused. Amen. Don't get distracted. There's a lot of distractions out there around us stay focused keep your eyes on me follow me many times we've got hindered or distracted by what others are or are not doing huh I'm telling you there's been good services there's been good services huh and you just, the Holy Ghost is just moving. Some people sitting back there. I'm going to turn this way because I don't want y'all to think I'm talking to none of y'all. They sitting there like a knot on the log. Look like they just lost their best coon dog. Huh? And you sit and you, and you, you know, you just worship a guy and you look back there and you say, man, what's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? And you begin to think that in your head. I wonder what's wrong with them. And I tell you, it don't matter what's wrong with them. I'm telling you, God's running up and down the hallways of my heart. I'm going to shout. I'm going to love him. I don't care if y'all sit here. Look at me. Look at me crazy. Amen. I'm going to worship him. That's what I came to do. Amen. That's what I came to do. I can just tell you, the ones that get in, will get in. And the ones that don't, will just miss out. Amen. Brother Brad, can you prove that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 500 was told to go to that upper room some of them decided they didn't want to go but 120 did 120 did huh rest of them sat around well I don't think he really meant for us to do that you know I just think he's talking you know just in a spiritual sense huh you know maybe we ought to get one of them commentaries down and you know run back and see if that's what he really meant Let me just help you, huh, with a little country boy commentary. I'm going to give it to you straight. I ain't going to charge you $59.99. Just going to give it to you. I ain't going to take up another offering. The offering's already been taken up. Just something's really going to help you. If God says don't, don't. 
You ain't got to try to twist it around and see if he meant something else. If God said don't, he means don't. Amen? If God says go, then he means go. If God says do, then he means do. Amen? Folks, I'm telling you, it ain't that hard. We've tried to complicate it. We've tried to uh, overshadow things. Amen? I'm telling you, God will tell you just exactly what he wants you to know. And there's a thousand devils out there trying to steal it out of your heart, trying to take away the joy, trying to take away the victory that you got can I tell you we can't afford to lose our joy we can't afford to lose our victory we can't afford to miss out this late in the game he's trying to remind us tonight church to stay focused and follow him amen we can't get discouraged we can't get hindered I'm telling you I'm telling you I don't care it does bother you it does bother you when you see one of them sly, velvet-tongued preachers up on TV and got 50,000 people in that auditorium, and he's telling them something different than what this Word of God says. It gets underneath your skin. It begins to rub you the wrong way. But can I tell you, I can't do anything about it except let that get me frustrated, except let that get in my spirit. And it began to gnaw at me, and it began to distract me from the true calling of God. Listen, I can't go there and straighten anything out, but I can every day where I walk, amen, shine the light of Jesus. Jesus, where I'm at, amen. Preach the truth, amen. Everywhere God gives me a platform. Huh? It might all it might not always be the church of God. Huh? I tell you, I went to get my license. They hauled me up there. Everybody else took their test, passed their test, Shanghai to the house. Me and her got pulled aside to a different room. Huh? They kind of do you like that sometimes, don't they? Want to question us. Ask us, what do we, how do we define sanctification? How do we define this? How do we define that? My wife said, we sitting out there waiting to go in that room. She said, what do you think? I said, I, I, said, I don't know. I don't know what in the world's going on. Said, Everybody else done left. She said, they done picked us out of the crowd. I said, yeah. She said, well, she said, what do you reckon? I said, don't matter. I said, I ain't no more not going to be licensed than I am right now. Huh? I said, they didn't call me. And their license don't mean to heal me. Listen, they pull my license tomorrow. I'll find me a tree. It don't matter, amen. God called me to preach. I'm going to preach, amen. I'm not going to stand before them when I get to when I get to the throne, amen. He's going to be sitting on the throne. And he's not going to ask me what I do with them license. He's going to say, what'd you do with that calling that I put on your life, amen. And church, I can tell you, I don't want to get distracted by things, uh, by, by licenses and by this and by that. I don't want to get distracted by those that like me and those that don't like me. Amen. Listen, he told Jeremiah, he said, you don't even look on their faces. He said, you just preach what I tell you to preach. Because I can tell you, some's going to like it, some ain't. Huh? Every town you go to, you go through this town, some of them tell you I'm a good preacher, some of them tell you I'm a dirty dog. Don't like me, ain't got no use for me. Don't even know me, but that's just how they feel. Huh? I tell you, preachers best loved and worst hated. <laughs> Can I tell you, it don't hurt my feelings a bit. You know why? Jesus was the most loved and he was the most hated. Huh? By those that followed him and adored him, he was the most loved. By those that crucified him, he was the most hated. Hey Amen. I can tell you, church, the Bible says, is the servant better than his master? No. No, ma'am, no, sir. It ain't going to be a walk, tiptoe through the tulips. Hey Amen. The Lord is desiring in each of us what he can do through us if we'll just quit worrying about what everybody else thinks about us. You say, Brother Brad, that, that, this, that, that's not a problem. It is a problem. It is a problem. And I can tell you the underline of that problem is pride. Huh? Yeah. 
I watched a pastor put a poll on a few weeks ago. It's on a Monday or a Tuesday. He's going to preach on Wednesday night. And he wants to know what the ten most what the ten most things is that young people deal with. Peer pressure. If this one likes me, if that one likes me, if uh, if this, that, and the other one, and one of them been in church all her life, says worth. What's my worth? And you know what I got to looking at that? I got to looking at every bit of that. And what they're trying to figure out is to this world, are they worth something? To other people, are they worth something? And it hurt my heart so bad. Listen, we're not in it to please this world. All I got to know is am I worth it to him? And can I tell you, hey, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You don't need this world to give you your worth. You don't need that crowd to give you your worth. Listen to me. You don't need your friends to give you your worth. Amen. He gave us, he gave us our worth. Amen. When he gave his only begotten son. Amen. The best that heaven had to offer. He gave for you. He gave for me. Amen. And I don't have to get my worth from a crowd. Amen. Let me tell you, church, we're spending too much time worried about who likes us, worried about what our worth is, and we're not getting the work of God done, and Jesus is about to come. Well, if I preach like that, they'll throw me out. Then preach on the street. Huh? Some of you think I ain't worried about it because it takes four or five of you to throw me out. <laughs> That might help. <laughs> but can I tell you, it's not, we don't get our worth from this world. We don't get our worth from our friends. Uh, can I tell you, young people, you don't get your worth from that boy. You don't get your worth from that girl. Amen. I'm telling you, you better get your worth from God. Amen. He loved you so much. Amen. And when he gets ready for you to fall in love with somebody, they're going to cherish you just like he does. Amen. And it's going to be right. Amen. And you ain't going to have to worry about your worth because they're going to prove it to you. Somebody drink this water for me, I preach. We can miss so much of what the Lord is desiring to do in us and through us by those distractions. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's pastors, there's preachers, there's evangelists, there's missionaries that's going to their posts, amen, and they're worried about what people think about them. And it's affecting them in their ministry to be able to preach the truth of God. Listen, you don't have to be mean to preach the truth. Matter of fact, the Word of God says preach the truth in love. But can I tell you, we sure got to love them enough to preach the truth. And I remind you, when you talk about all them, listen, I know a lot of people struggle with small churches. A lot of people think because they got 10,000 people there, it's successful. There might be some 10,000 member churches that's successful. Very might will be. I don't know. Can I tell you, God's not called me to pastor that church. God's not called me to judge that church. He just called me to preach what he's laid upon my heart. Amen. What he's laid upon my heart. And I'm telling you what he's telling us tonight is don't get distracted. Keep your eyes on him. Amen. Follow him. Amen. Not everybody, not everybody's going to go. Not everybody's going to do. Not everybody's going to work. Not everybody's going to love him like you. Not everybody's going to do what he's called them to do. But thank God there is some that is. Somebody do the math for me. Somebody do the math for me. Brother Scott, you quick at math. 500 was bid to go to that upper room. 120 went. How many didn't go? Is it 380? 380. Thank you, Lord. I couldn't, I couldn't add that fast. 380 went. You know what that means? Three times didn't go as many as did. Huh? Man, you start off with a big group. 
you got 500 and you're trying to lead them. Come on, come on. It's imperative. It's imperative. And it's a burden on your heart and you're trying to lead them people and you look around and three quarters of them back there and only a quarter of them's following you. I can tell you, that old devil began to play with your mind. That old devil began to play games. What are you trying to say, Brother Brad? I'm telling you it ain't about the number that goes with you. It ain't about the strength that's with you. Gideon's army proved that. Amen. Gideon's army proved that. Amen. God said, I can do a whole lot more with a lot less. You just give me some people that will keep their eyes on me. Amen. Keep their eyes pointed the right direction. That's how he picked them out. They kept their eyes in the right direction. They didn't get detoured. They didn't get distracted. That's how God picked them out. Listen, God's trying to pick out some people in 2018. It's fixing to turn 2019. There's a lot of distractions around us. We're going to keep our eyes on him or we're going to get distracted by those things over there. Huh? You may tell you how dangerous distractions are. They're dangerous. You don't think they're dangerous? Take your cell phone. Not right now. Some of you done reaching for your cell phone. Take your cell phone when you get home or tomorrow. Go on YouTube and type in accidents with cell phones. Watch them people walking through. Walking through the mall. Fall right over into one of them big fountains. Walk right out in front of cars. Huh? You say, Brother Brad, that's kind of hilarious. It is unless you're the one who walked in front of the car. Huh? What happened? Brother Brad, that's, that's silly. That's silly. Distractions. Distractions. Huh? People step into eternity all day long because of distractions. Huh? On them cell phones. Other distractions. It ain't just cell phones. There's other distractions in our lives. Huh? There's good people. Sets in good services. In good churches. With a good Holy Ghost moving. And distractions on their mind. And they ain't heard half what the preacher said. Huh? Oh, but I got my check mark. I was in church. Listen, I ain't just trying to preach something just because I got to have a message tonight to preach. I'm preaching with my heart. I'm preaching. I'm telling you, I've been trying to preach this message time after time. God wouldn't let me preach it until tonight. One day, I'm going to preach a message like this for the very last time. And Jesus is going to come. Jesus is going to come. And that distraction... That distraction that so captivated our heart and our mind could very well keep us from making heaven our home. But Lord, I, I've done all these things from my youth up. Yet lackest thou one thing. One thing. That one thing that you couldn't get your heart to turn loose of. That one thing that you couldn't get your mind off of. Huh? You see, because that rich young ruler, he's sitting there listening to all them things. He's telling Jesus, all these I've kept from my youth up. Then Jesus went for the heart. Then Jesus went for the heart. Oh, you got it cleaned up good on the inside. But let me go let, on the outside. But let me go. Let me go to where I can see. Let me go to that inside. Now he said, yet yeah, lackest thou one thing. He said that rich young ruler went away sorrowful said he went away sorrowful. You know why? Because he wasn't willing to let go of that one thing. That one thing. That one thing that distracts our mind. That one thing that distracts our heart. That one thing that keeps us from fully committing to Almighty God. From totally yielding ourselves to Him. Saying, Lord, not my will, but Thy will be done. What is it? What is it? What is it? That's the one thing that's going to hinder us. And he's saying tonight, don't get distracted. Keep your eyes on me. Amen. Stay focused. 380 didn't go. Had the same warning. All of them had the same warning. All of them had the same invitation. All of them had the same call. 120 went. I can tell you there's 120 
Never regretted going. There's 380 missed out, amen. There's a 380 missed out, wishing they'd have win every day. But there's 120 said, I thank God I didn't miss a call. I thank God I didn't let something get in my way. I thank God I went on, amen, that day when I heard the call. I thank God I didn't worry about how what I had to do that next week. I thank God I heard the call. Can I tell you, some that started on this road, you and I know, they're no longer there. They're no longer following Jesus. Can I tell you, you can't keep your eyes on them. Follow Him. Follow Him. I ain't saying don't pray for them. I ain't saying don't have a burden for them. I'm just saying you can't follow the way they win. Amen. Follow Him. Amen. We must endure to the end. We must fight the good fight of faith. We must follow after the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. Amen. Uh, the, Paul said in the first part of 2 Timothy 4 and 10, we know this. He said, For Demoth hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Amen. Having loved it. There was something Demas didn't want to get rid of. There's something that Demas uh, didn't want to let go of. There's something, amen, that every time he heard Jesus preach, he held on to something he wasn't willing to let go of every time there was an altar call every time they had a revival in a city there was just something down deep in that heart that Demas wasn't ready to get rid of Amen. and can I tell you it separated him from God it drew him back into this world I'm telling you, ma'am, sir, Jesus is dealing with it. Jesus is pointing it out in your life. If you're not willing to deal with it, you'll still be here holding on to it when that trumpet sounds, amen. You'll wake up, amen, and the church will be gone, amen. And you'll say, my God, what happened, amen. Can I tell you, he said, demon, have forsaken me, having loved this present world. Whatever's got a hold in your life that you're not willing to let go of, I can tell you when it's time to go up, it'll hold on to you some quit some turn to the right some turn to the left Jesus said follow me follow me we must make up our mind tonight to follow him Mark 12 and 30 says and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy mind Mind and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. There's always going to be naysayers, there's always going to be doubters, and those that have more opinions and they have victories. Huh? I can tell you. God gives you a burden, God gives you a vision. Don't expect everybody to be excited about it. Huh? <laughs> They're going to be naysayers. They're going to be them that say, oh, man, you crazy. You can serve God here in Georgia just as good as you can down there in Florida. And I'll tell you, I heard it all. Amen. People told me, you going down there to that little old church, uh, take your family out of that house into that old trailer, you crazy, man. What's wrong with you? Can I tell you? They didn't have the burden I had. They didn't have, uh, they didn't have the burden I had. They didn't have the call of God that I had. I'm telling you, I'd have rather got down here and preach uh, than to eat, amen. I knew what God had laid on my heart. I couldn't expect them to understand. Ma'am, sir, can I tell you, you might not get them to understand, but if you'll just not get distracted if you'll hold on to Jesus amen one day one day while those naysayers are still standing there accomplishing nothing for God he's going to say well done thou good and faithful servant they got more opinions and they got victories and they don't mind raining on everybody else's parade huh your value doesn't come from man's opinions, but of God's. If I had a dollar for every time somebody told me I was crazy, we wouldn't have to worry about no money for missions. Huh? We could live off the interest. My wife even told me I was crazy one time. About that steeple out there. Y'all remember that? I'm riding down. I said, turn around. She said, what are you doing? I said, 
you see that steeple? I said, yes, yeah. I said, that ain't no church no more. She said, you crazy. You know what I am now? I'm a crazy preacher with a steeple. Huh? I'm telling you, everybody might not see what you see. But when God lays it on your heart, it don't matter if they see it or not. It just matters if you know where it comes from. You follow it. You follow it. Amen. I'm telling you, them three wise men, they looked like a bunch of idiots following that star until they got to where that Savior was. Huh? I've seen it more than one time this week. Noah looked like an idiot till it started to rain. Huh? Moses. Man, what, what are you doing getting up out of your own land, out of your own country, just wandering around, just following? You don't even know where you're going. That wasn't Moses. That was Abraham. I'll get the right. I'll get, hey, y'all shout when I get the right character. Amen. Abraham. He looked for a city who hath foundations, whose builder and maker was God. Hey, I got one that I know for sure. David fought Goliath. Can I tell you? I want you to put yourself there that day. Put yourself there that day. Every bit of Israel. Every bit of Israel's hiding. But here comes David. Man, what y'all hiding for? Huh? That you don't see that giant out there? Huh? Who's he think he is? They look at him, who you think you are? You see, everybody thought, everybody thought David didn't measure up to Goliath. But when David took off Goliath's head, what happened? They all got behind him. Huh? They all got behind him. Can I tell you? Some might feel that you don't measure up, but don't he didn't David didn't let that detour him that they didn't have confidence in him. Matter of fact, old Saul was scared to fight, but he said, Here, you take my armor. Thing wouldn't fit, ruddy little old David. Amen. David said, Listen, listen, you just put that stuff aside, amen. I'm going out there in the name of the Lord, amen. I'm gonna fight. Why? Because God put a fight in my heart. God said for me to go, and I'm gonna go. There's a thousand, there's a whole country back there saying, You crazy the old boy and they thinking in their mind you don't measure up listen I can't tell you how many amen this went out that they thought we didn't measure up amen but can I tell you if God be for us who can be against us I'm telling you God didn't measure David God just put the fight in David and said go get him boy greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world But there's a world that'll measure you. Don't worry about their measuring stick. You just worry about what God says. Amen. It didn't bother David that there was a whole country back here that was scared. And not one of them walked behind him and backed him up. But they did tell him their doubts. They did voice their opinions. Huh? There's going to be naysayers. There's going to be doubters. I'm telling you, and they ain't few neither. There's a whole bunch of them. And the devil will send them in droves. The devil will send, the devil will send them in swarms. Amen? Just to try to get you to back down. Listen, if God, if God says go, there ain't a devil in hell that can stop you. Amen. There ain't a devil in hell that can stop you. What you trying to say, Brother Brad? If we are awaiting the approval of man for our calling, we've looked to the wrong place for our value, the wrong person for our power, and the wrong source for our fire. Listen, listen, God's put it in our heart. Amen. And if he be for us, there's nobody that can stand against us, amen. All we got to do is just stay focused on what he's called us to do. Don't get distracted by the enemy. Don't get distracted by the naysayers, amen. And just simply follow him. Please don't misunderstand me tonight. And thinking that you're just supposed to be a rebel. Not never needing anybody. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying though. I'm just saying though. 
If God puts it in your heart and you know he puts it in your heart, don't let nobody distract you from it. Amen. Even if nobody will stand with you. You got to have your determined to stand even if you have to stand alone. 2 Timothy verse chapter number 4 verses 16 through 18. Paul, he says, At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray that I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and I will persevere and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Listen, okay, can I tell you, the lions can't eat you, the oil can't boil you, amen. If God sends you, amen, the king can't throw you in a furnace, amen if God be for you, who can be against you, amen, don't let distractions, don't let hindrances don't let fears, amen rob you from the victory that God has for you but you know what a lot of times we worry about those that don't get in more than we do about those that did get in. Huh? You know, they could have stopped halfway to that upper room and said, you know what? This just ain't right, boys. This just ain't right. There's 380 out there. <laughs> you know what that goes to tell me? They didn't go by majority vote. <laughs> There's 120 of them said, you know what? We remember what the Lord said. We remember what the Lord said. Amen. Don't worry about those that won't get in. Can I tell you, those that can't be moved God, by God, listen, listen to me. Those that can't be moved by God won't be used by God. You can say that's mean if you want to. But you show me one illustration in this book where people who refused to be moved by God was ever used by God. They ain't one. We worry about those that don't share our same vision. Listen, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to call other pastors, get other pastors to do this, get other pastors to do this, get other pastors to do that. Listen, get, get people together. Do this, do that. Can I tell you, I'm tired of it. Are you against everybody? Are you mad at everybody? No, ma'am, no, sir. But I'm going to tell you, if God lays something on my heart, I'll invite them. They don't want to do it. Then I'm just going to go on ahead right by myself. Huh? I can't tell you how much ministry has been neglected. I can't tell you how much ministry has been hindered by waiting for somebody else to get on board who don't have the same vision. Can I say this with all goodness and with all love, and I'll try to put a smile on my face while I'm saying it. If they don't got the same vision you got, it's better off they don't go no how. Huh? It's better off they don't go no how. It's hard to go left when you got somebody pulling right. And if they ain't got the same vision you got, then they ain't going to be able to pull with you. And when the going gets tough, they're going to want to slow down. They're going to want to sit down. Song said, if mama don't go, don't hinder me. If daddy don't go, don't hinder me. Church, can I tell you? I don't know how many more messages we're going to hear. I don't know how many more altar calls is going to be given. I know we're looking, we're very close to turning to 2019. I cannot believe it's fixing to be 2019. I never thought we would get here. I didn't. 
But can I tell you, I'm not, we're not there yet. And I, you know, I'm looking for the Lord to come back. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not just out here trying to tell you something. I'm just telling you, I don't know when the last message I'm going to preach. The last opportunity you're going to have to pray. The last opportunity we're going to have to pray together. The last time we hear the Lord tell us, don't get discouraged. Don't get hindered. It hurts when people don't pull with you. It hurts when you feel like you're by yourself. It hurts when you can't get people to understand. But can I tell you what? We can't let it hinder us. We can't let it hinder us. We can't let it hinder us. We've got to follow Him. If nobody else does, you look, you look at those multitudes that followed Him. Bunches of them followed Him until one day He preached a message they didn't like. Huh? And they said, man, this is hard. And many of them, the, read the scripture, says followed him no more. They turned away. They followed him no more. He looked at them disciples. He said, will you also go away? Peter said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal. Where are you going to go? Well, listen, when the whole world turns us back, we better still follow him. Amen. Stand with me all over this house. Would you hear one thing this preacher says tonight? Stay in love with Jesus. Stay in love with Jesus. Because if you'll stay in love with Him, you'll cling to Him when nobody else does. Huh? Stay focused and follow Him. You know, a lot of times we think a little deviation don't matter. You take that rifle scope, you click it, one click. And shoot 300 yards and see if it makes a difference. It does. It does. That old devil's trying to tell you, oh, it don't matter. It don't matter. Just because it ain't exactly right, it don't matter. It does. You follow it far enough, you'll miss it by a mile. Huh? Stick with that word. Stick with Him. Don't get distracted. Make sure you're following Him. Huh? If Mama don't go, don't hinder me. If Daddy don't go, don't hinder me. Listen to me, church. If preacher decides to turn around, I hope to God I don't. I hope to God I don't. By God's help and by God's mercy and grace, I don't want to. But if I turn around, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Don't get off track. Don't get off track. Follow Him. Amen. Would you come spend some time around these altars? Ask God to touch us. Help us in this house.